my name is Markayla Johnson and I am presenting on Haemophilus influenza type B or commonly known as HIV. So a brief history, um, Haemophilus itself actually means blood loving and Haemophilus influenza was found in 1892 by Robert Pfeiffer during the influenza pandemic and because this is when it was found, they believed it to be the cause of this pandemic and that is why the species name is influenza. However, we know that it is not actually the cause of the flu. In 1931, Margaret Pittman identified distinct strains um, as cases for meningitis. And you can see there is a large time gap between 1931 and 1993. And for this time gap, I found them to um, start typing the different Haemophilus influenza strains. However, in 1993, um, it was totally isolated, and that is when they found out that it is the, not the case of the flu. However, the name has still stuck with it, and we still call it Haemophilus influenza. In 1995, Haemophilus influenza was the first free-living organism to have its entire chromosome sequence, which is pretty cool. Um, it has 1,830,140 base pairs of DNA in a single circular chromosome. Um, in 1990, the final vaccine um, has been released and used for um, infants and younger children. See, in 1895, 85, and 87, there were two other vaccines released, but they were not um, able to be used on small infants, which is the, the main target group that they needed to be able to vaccinate. So there are six different serotypes of Haemophilus influenza, and these are all categorized and based on the presence of polysaccharide capsules. And so to distinguish them, they just named them A through F, and type B is the most virulent, and um, that is what we're talking about. And the Haemophilus influenza is naturally colonized in the nasopharynx, however, when it leaves this area, it becomes invasive, and can cause all sorts of diseases. And this image down here, we can see um, the encapsulated strains that are isolated in cerebrospinal fluid. So HIV is most prevalent in infants and children, and some of the diseases it can cause um, are bacteremia, which is in the blood, pneumonia in the lungs, meningitis, um, in the meninges, which cover the outside of the brain, and epiglottitis. And what's really cool about that, it's more rare, but you can see it on an x-ray, and it looks like a thumbprint. Um, right there you can see with the little arrow, and um, it's, the epiglottis is just enlarged. And so some basic characteristics of HIV is that it is a gram-negative bacteria, and it belongs to the pastoral cellae family. Um, it's aerobic, non-motile, and it's pleomorphic, co cocobacilli shape, and so because it's pleomorphic, it can change its size um, a little bit depending on each different type. And most importantly, it is encapsulated, and this characteristic allows it to resist phagocytosis when invading. And so transmission, as I mentioned before, um, it can live in the mouth and nose and not cause any harm to anyone, but when it moves to different parts, it's when it becomes infected. Um, it's spread from person to person, um, and respiratory droplets such as sneezing and coughing um, is the most prevalent way that it is passed on to people. However, most carriers are asymptomatic, and the peak seasons are September to December and March and May. So who contracts HIV? Mostly infants and children um, under five years of age, which is why it's very important to get them vaccinated. Um, their early infant months. And then adults 65 years of age and older are also at risk of contracting HIV. And then of course immunocompromised people such as those who have sickle cell disease, um, asplenia, HIV, antibody complement deficiency, and um, recipients of chemotherapy, and so on and so on. So how serious is HIV? It's very serious, although um, we don't see it a lot today, thankfully, which is because of the vaccine. 
However, more and more people are starting to not be vaccinated. And so when these patients come into the hospital, um, it's harder for newer physicians to identify because um, it's not something they've seen. And so that is also very dangerous um, that it's harder to identify because it isn't prevalent and we want it to not be prevalent. And so um, that's why I need to get vaccinated. But uh, most children with HIV disease um, definitely do need hospitalization if it is an invasive um, infection. And as many of one out of five children who survive HIV meningitis will have brain damage or become deaf. So how do we diagnose HIV? Um, it's pretty simple. You just take um, body fluid. You can take blood, but um, it's best to take spinal fluid from a spinal tap through the lumbar um, region of the spinal cord area, and um, you can see in the diagram how that is collected. And so treatments for non-invasive, such as bronchitis, um, otitis media, and cellulitis, um, 10-day antibiotic course is sufficient. However, for invasive, such as meningitis, um, you need to be hospitalized. And even though you're in the hospital and you're being watched over, um, three to six out of every 100 children will die from bacterial meningitis. So the HIV vaccine is an inactivated conjugate vaccine. And as I said earlier, it was introduced in 1990 for children up to 15 months. And you can see right there um, how the polysaccharide is very important and how the vaccine is able to help by using that. And so it's given in three main doses and then a booster. So two months, four months, six months, and then um, a booster between 15 and 18 months is recommended. And more than 90% of infants who receive these dosages um, become immune. However, we don't receive this um, as adults, so that is where we rely on herd immunity, which is also why vaccination is super important. Um, so before the vaccine, HIV was a leading cause of bacterial meningitis, and it caused about 20,000 cases of invasive diseases. And then as a result of that, um, 1,000 deaths per year. And after the vaccine, um, in 2013, less than 40 cases occurred annually in children under five years old. Vaccination today, we can see in the yellow countries that are highlighted that these countries use the HIV vaccine in their routine vaccinations. However, there are still a lot of the world that is still developing and so they are not able to have these vaccines unfortunately and they still have to deal with HIV um, which it is more prevalent there. And HIV today um, so during 2000 to 2012, the average instance rate for the United States was 0.27 out of 100,000, which is a very, very good number. And as we can see from that, HIV has decreased by more than 99%. Um, it is a super effective vaccine. And most cases that occur today are attributed to not vaccinating. So HIV is a very deadly disease, but it is something that we can prevent by vaccination, and that is my presentation.